Yo, what's up, CV survivors? Welcome to this Resident Evil 3 analysis, and in this video, we're gonna be critiquing and analyzing Nemesis. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, after playing this game, I did not experience Nemesis, and that's exactly why I'm making this video. I'm gonna tell you guys what I liked about Nemesis in this game, and I'm gonna tell you what I didn't like about Nemesis. So let's get right into it, y'all. So the game starts off with the tyrant of all tyrants being made. And I'm excited for this game because I needed a more aggro version of Mr. X. So when you first see Nemesis, it's in Joe's apartment at the beginning of the game, and we're able to see Nemesis' behemoth strength as he just busts through the wall. And then we're able to see just how strong this guy is. Like this man is punching holes in the floor, he's punching holes in the wall, and he's taking shots to the face like it's nothing. Like during this whole cutscene, you can see that this man will use whatever he can to kill you. Like he's picking up rubble and he's throwing it at you. This man's stomping through the floor. He is definitely trying to get you out the way real quick. Like the cutscene does a really good job at showing Nemesis' strength and his capabilities and it makes you really excited to see how it's going to translate into gameplay. But looking back at the opening cutscene, it's kind of disappointing because they should have implemented you actually like navigating yourself in the apartment and playing the game rather just than a little run sequence when you hold up. Like the cutscene itself is good, but the intro would have been even way better with actual gameplay and you experiencing yourself running away from this behemoth. So let's talk about my favorite aspect of Nemesis, and that's stage one Nemesis, humanoid, bare hands, no weapons, because that's the best version of Nemesis this game gives to you. Considering Nemesis just took a whole rocket to the face, I knew that the first encounter with Nemesis would be wild. The gameplay you're seeing is from the Nightmare difficulty, but I gotta talk about my first encounter with Nemesis. When I first saw Nemesis, he was piecing me up. You would run away, and then you would get away, and he would leap to you out of nowhere. He was yanking me with his tentacles through fences. He was whooping my ass, but honestly, I was enjoying it. It was so much better than Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. On my first playthrough, you have to really learn the timing on his punches so you can get the perfect dodge. And the timing is kind of strict, so he was definitely giving you the hands. You can see in this clip that Nemesis completely disrespects my first aid spray as he just one hit kills you. Nemesis doesn't really have too many different attacks in his humanoid stage 1 form. He either is going to throw one punch or throw a series of punches. He's either going to yank you with his tentacle. But the thing about it is he's so relentless and he charges at you so fast that it's very intimidating and he can still catch you off guard despite of the low variability of his attacks. He might grab you, but the clips you saw were from Nightmare, so I don't know if his one hit kill grab is only in Nightmare and Inferno, but he might grab you too. What I like about Nemesis in the early part of the game is he actually stalks you and pursues you, and when you increase the difficulty of the game, there's areas that he will go into that in lower difficulties he wouldn't go into. Like he will go into the garage, he will go into the donut shop. So you can use those areas as chase breakers on higher difficulties. Next, we got to talk about the next phase of Nemesis, and that's Flamethrower Nemesis. Now, I actually got a lot of things to critique in this part because I feel like they wasted so much potential they could have did with Flamethrower Nemesis. The main issue is you're really just running away from Nemesis. Like, he has a weapon now, but... You're just watching him burn stuff, and it doesn't really translate to gameplay. Like, we can see he's smart enough to use a flamethrower, but what I think they should have really did with this part is make that area open to explore and actually make you encounter Nemesis and fight him with the flamethrower. They could have made you explore that little demolition site, and you could have gotten caught to a room and he could have burnt the room up with you in it and they could have made you figure out which room is the right room to go in. Like, there's so many things they could have did rather than have you run away from Nemesis in a linear fashion. 
the boss fight with Flamethrower Nemesis is actually a really good boss fight I enjoy in this game. The reasons I enjoy this boss fight so much is the different phases and the different attacks Nemesis uses from when the flamethrower is fully functional to the point where it breaks and he's still weaponizing it to kill you with it. Like looking at its attacks, he does a standard flamethrower burn which you know is easy to avoid and whatever. But as you start shooting the, f the fuel tank in the back, then he kind of changes up his attack patterns. Like you can see him do fire swipes, which is it's a pretty cool move, it looks good. And then he shoots the fire up in the air and then creates all this flame terrain in the, on the roof. And by the time you make the flamethrower fully unfunctional, he still picks it up and tries to bat you with it. I really like the concept of Nemesis trying to weaponize anything he can to kill you. It's like this guy religiously hates you and you can just tell by the way he yells stars every time he sees you. I gotta say, one of the scariest things Nemesis does in this game is when he's charging at you with the broken flamethrower. That is the scariest thing ever. He is way too big to be running like that like he has a spear. Following that boss fight, I like how he just chugs the broken flamethrower right at you. Now we gotta talk about Rocket Launcher Nemesis. And what I like about Rocket Launcher Nemesis is it's right after the boss fight with the flamethrower. You can still see he comes with the flame still burning and they just get put out. What I don't like about Rocket Launcher Nemesis is it's pretty much just a run sequence. You're not interacting with Nemesis in the world where you can encounter him in a different area in that surrounding and have to deal with him in the rocket launcher. You're just really running away from him to a, an area where you get away in a linear fashion. I think they missed an opportunity to really capitalize on Nemesis and his signature weapon with the rocket launcher, making you interact with him. I ain't gonna front though, Nightmare, he was definitely piecing me up with that rocket launcher, him and the zombies. Now let's talk about stage two Nemesis. Stage two Nemesis, I call him Dog Nemesis, and he transforms in the game and then you're greeted with another run sequence. How fun. And you are in an arena with Dog Nemesis. Stage two Nemesis definitely looks threatening with all those teeth and the sharp claws and how tall he is. But let's talk about the boss fight. So Nemesis has different moves and most of his moves are ground pounds. He'll smash you with his fist, he will jump up and he'll ground pound you with his body. He has a grab that leads to like a dog bite and then he'll throw you away. Honestly, Nemesis transformation is very underwhelming and it's not cool at all. One thing about these boss fights when Nemesis transforms to dog Nemesis is they last forever and I don't understand why the boss fights take forever when you be dishing so much damage to them sometimes and the boss fight still wants to prolong. One thing I will say about Dog Nemesis in this boss fight is he definitely has been programmed with some WWE because this man goes all the way up there just to swanton bomb me. One thing with Nemesis in this boss fight is you can see he still has some intelligence because when he's running across the cars he will stomp and then sometimes he'll jump directly at you or he will look like he's jumping at you but then he will land somewhere else and sneak attack you. That tactic becomes more relevant at higher difficulties. This boss fight is just really kind of easy. A lot of his tanks are easily avoidable and on my very first try at this boss I actually ran out of ammo and had to use the knife. I was able to master his attack patterns and I was knifing the mess out of dog nemesis. When we first encounter stage 3 Nemesis, the really only difference is he's bigger and bulkier, he has more spikes on him, and one of his arms are replaced by his any parasite tentacle. When we actually see him use his tentacle in a cutscene, you can see that thing actually has teeth on it, which I didn't notice that until I actually looked at the cutscene. Quickly after that, we're introduced to another crawling sequence, which is honestly just the most pointless me holding the up direction event in my life. So now we can actually get to the boss fight with stage 3 Nemesis and honestly his attack patterns are pretty much the same as his first stage dog form with the addition of two tentacle attacks and one of them he just spazzes out and he swings his tentacle everywhere. If you get hit by one of those swipes you might get stun locked and then get up into another swipe which is not cool. And another tentacle attack he just launches it straight at you. One thing that separates this boss fight from the other boss fights is zombies actually come into the field and depending on which difficulty 
the higher difficulties, they actually launch more zombies and pell heads at you, which can actually get in your way. And Nemesis still tries to juke you, he's still showing that he has some type of intelligence for combat. Now one thing I have to say is, I do not understand why these boss fights with Nemesis, especially Dog Nemesis, he has an abundance of health. Look at this clip where I easily just put this guy down with so much ammo and hard hitting weapons and then the fight still prolongs and he does not want to die after I make the game transition from the first part of the boss fight to the second. It's like I'm dodging on your moves, I'm hitting you with hard weapons, just die. So let's talk about stage 4 Nemesis. After he's covered in acid, we can see that he's a big blob and then all of a sudden he turns into this Venus flytrap monster. Look, just so you know, this is the last fucking time. So pretty much, he's a pushover on every difficulty other than Nightmare and Inferno. But on Nightmare, this guy had me stressing. He was slapping me up like some Donkey Kong Congo drums. And when you try to push in the batteries into the power outlets, this man has a one hit kill grab too. So all of his moves are pretty much hand slams or fist slams or grabs. When he tries to slap you up with all those hand slams, if you get hit by the first one, you're stun locked and you're forced to watch yourself die, which is really annoying. Now, once you learn the timing of his moves, because he does change the timing of his moves, which we can say that shows that he's had some type of intelligence for combat again, it's easy. I remember it, I, it took me probably like 20 tries to beat this guy my first time. I ended up buying all those coins in the shop and he still was like beating my ass. They weren't even like keeping me alive. But once you get those timing rights on the hand slam so he can't dribble you like a basketball, he's actually really easy. Now for some last criticisms. I didn't like in this game how Nemesis kept upgrading very rapidly fast from being barehanded to having all this arsenal, but then it's like the last two thirds of the game, you don't even see Nemesis anymore. It's like once as soon as he mutates, he will not follow you for the rest of the game and he poses no threat to disrupting your regular gameplay. Like I think they should have took their time with Nemesis and he could have popped up in other locations in the game like the hospital. Like the hospital he could have rolled through with his grenade launcher to disrupt your gameplay then. And you don't even fight Nemesis with Carlos either. Dong Nemesis was very eh, like once I saw the trailer I was kind of like eh, and then like he's only confined to arenas so he's just bosses and like you don't even really experience Dong Nemesis, like Dong Nemesis could have been better if he actually was implemented to disrupt your regular game plan and stalk you like he did as a humanoid nemesis. I don't want to hear that the game wasn't designed to have him stalk you. And I know in the original Resident Evil 3, or the Resident Evil 3 nemesis, his appearances were scripted, but okay, script them in even more in the game then. Like considering on Nightmare, where he can follow you in locations he doesn't even normally go in, you literally see him grapple into other areas of the map. And then even in the cutscenes, he busts through the roof and you see him stomp through Bruce, so he definitely can follow you throughout the rest of the game and come up in different locations. But gently seeing this guy grapple out of the donut shop, and the donut shop has a roof, so do not tell me that Nemesis cannot be scripted in other areas of the game. He should have popped up in the sewers too. But anyways, I did not experience Nemesis, and this is why and I will be going to play Resident Evil 3 Nemesis so I can experience Nemesis. And if you like this video, subscribe. If you don't like the video, okay. So I don't know what my next Resident Evil video would be about. Maybe you guys can provide some ideas, but it's perspective and you guys already know. Vibe out and I'll catch you guys later.